Hey YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and this is a video that has spawned from one of the uh, comments I've got on the Fluval Edge uh, unboxing. Uh, a lot of people want to know about stocking options for the Fluval Edge 12 gallon, especially. Uh, I have a lot of questions on the 6 gallon too, and some of what I have to say will sort of carry over one to the other. Now, the Fluval Edge is sort of a unique aquarium in that uh, the water goes all the way to the top if filled up properly and it sticks out a little bit on the bottom. Now this bottom part doesn't matter so much, it's more of a design feature, but the water going all the way to the top means that uh, the small hole at the top is the only area where you actually get uh, oxygen into the water from the, you know, from the surrounding air. So because of that, the concentration of oxygen in this is potentially much lower than your typical aquarium. And uh, that kind of sets into motion some of the things you want to think about when you think about stocking the Fluval Edge. I definitely wouldn't stock it as much as you would a normal 12 gallon. And what I've chosen to do with mine is uh, make it a shrimp tank. Uh, and I'll show you some of the things that I have going on in here in just a little bit. Some other fish that would probably be appropriate are small fish like Danios. Uh, it's good for guppies. Uh, perhaps a small cichlid or two uh, could go in there. Uh, if you've got a, a lot of, uh, let's say, dwarf puffers, it would be a fantastic tank for a little colony of dwarf puffers. Uh, I like to think that this tank would be excellent as a species tank for a very specific fish that you don't want to mix in with the general population. So. That's kind of why I've chosen this for my shrimp tank. I've taken to these new shrimp called bamboo shrimp and sort of filter the water through their uh, little fans, fan-like hands, and they filter the water and then place it in their mouth, and it's really interesting. But they, uh, they don't seem to last very long when I put them in with other fish. Uh, now, in this tank now, I've had them going for about a month, and uh, they all seem fine. It's actually the longest I've kept one of these, and uh, I got... I think I've got four of the bamboo shrimp and one of the blue mole shrimp, which is uh, very similar to the bamboo shrimp, although it hides constantly. I, uh, it looks very similar to the bamboo shrimp other than it's kind of this pale powder blue color. But uh, if you put one of those in your tank, you can count on it pretty much immediately going to the darkest corner and hiding where you'll never see it again. So. I can't say as I recommend that shrimp as if you like to actually see the fish that you purchase. Um, but uh, there is one in here and if he ever comes out, if I can lure him out somehow, maybe I'll get a photo of him and place it in the video. If not, that's why. Uh, I did include an actual fish in this tank. I put a um, baby bristlenose catfish. Uh, one thing about this tank that can be a pain is cleaning the algae around the inside so I have as many algae eating creatures in here as possible and what's great is I'll see that uh, bristle nose even up on the top of the glass going around and eating things you know way up here on top and it's pretty neat uh, he at a, an adult size probably wouldn't be appropriate he might be a little bit too big for this tank but uh, they only get about five inches other than that's why I love bristlenose placos versus uh, the regular placo, uh, the traditional placos that you see. One, they're really neat with the bristles that come out and they just look like these wild antlers and the males especially. Um, two, they only get about five inches long. So you can keep them in a relatively small aquarium and uh, they pretty much get along with everything else you're going to put in there. I have found that they will eat eggs if you have egg laying fish and you're trying to breed them. I don't, don't recommend putting them in with that, but I should have no problem in this tank. Uh, he's pretty much the only fish fish I have in this tank. Everything else is going to be shrimp. I've also added um, a mono shrimp or the algae eating shrimp and I've got two of those in there and I've got a, a number of uh, cherry shrimp that I've added from my 30 gallon into this one. Uh, I think I've only put four or five in there. They're kind of hard to find right now. It's sort of a Where's Waldo whenever I'm looking for the cherries. But uh, hopefully they'll start to colonize and breed in there a little bit more and a little bit more. And uh, soon I'll have a, a whole tank full. So that'll be interesting to see. Some fish I don't recommend for this aquarium would be uh, pretty much any fish that goes to the surface for water. And that includes betas, grommies, 
uh, autosynclus, Corydoras catfish, all of those come to the surface and get a little bit of water uh, or get a little bit of oxygen. And um, I think with this glass surface, that could be a problem. <laughs> I mean, basically, they'd, they'd be aiming for this really small spot right up here. And um, I don't know. I haven't attempted it. This is all just speculation, okay? And some of you guys might have had great luck with that. Uh, one, for a beta especially, the current is very strong right at that opening because that's where the filter pours in. So if the beta has got to go up there to get his oxygen, he's going to be fighting that current every single time. So I definitely don't think it's a good idea to stick a beta in there unless you go against you know the way it was designed and you just let the water drain down a little bit so that there's a, actually a surface of air inside of the aquarium. Now if you do that, all of those things could probably survive just fine. And I don't think it really affect the functionality a great deal although you will have a lot of noise and you'll have to kind of watch for the evaporation. The evaporation in these tanks actually happens pretty quick and uh, I find this water level drops below this at least once during the cycle before I uh, go to ch do a water change. So uh, the other ones uh, like autosynclus, uh, they move pretty quick. They, they don't mind a current too much. They probably wouldn't have too much of a problem it's just a matter of can they find that, that little small surface. If they're used to just going anywhere that's up, I have a feeling that they just come up and hit the glass <laughs> and that could cause some confusion or some sort of problems and I just hate to cause that extra stress on the fish. I know Corydoras too shoot straight up to the top and they go very quickly and then they grab a little bit of oxygen and go back down. So I can just imagine there being a glass plate that they can't really understand or perceive right at the surface of the water and then them shooting up and hitting it. Um, they probably could figure out where the hole is and go for the oxygen, but uh, if any of you have any experience in that sort of thing, I, I'd really love to get some feedback and uh, hear what you have to say, so just leave a comment below. Tell me about your what you've got in your Fluval Edge 12 gallon, your Fluval Edge 6 gallon. Uh, let me know what kind of fish you keep and how they're doing. Uh, I'd be interested to read it, and I'm sure a lot of other people would too. I get tons of questions about this, and I uh, just want to offer my two cents and see if it helps you guys out. All right, have a great day. Thanks. Also, cats. Cats are not recommended for the Fluval Edge 12 gallon. They just have trouble getting them through the hole and although they like to stare at it from the outside they're not so much into uh, getting in there from the inside. Isn't that right?